Relation notation part three, equation to table to graph. This time I'm leaving your table completely empty. You have to choose x's, solve for y's, figure out where you're going to put your axes, figure out what you're going to count by, graph the points. Now this is more like what you can expect to see in a math classroom on a math test. Not a whole lot is given to you. You have to make a lot of choices. I'm asking you today to try to choose x's that lead to integer y's, meaning whole number positive, whole number negative y's. I'm going to give you three examples with the three graphs we're doing today. You can choose to use them or not use them. Remember, if we have a fraction and we have stuff, multiple operations happening above or below the bar, there's an understood parenthesis that we want to put around the this time denominator. I happen to know that 60 divided by 15 is 4, so I'm going to try to force that denominator to be 15. 2x plus 1 equals 15, so that I can force my final answer to be a whole number, 4. We've got well, 2 times 7 would be 14, plus 1 is 15, so I'm going to need x to be 7. If x is 7, then w, or the thing that we're going to call y, if x is 7, then y is going to equal 4, so I have a point seven four. Okay, that's the idea. See if you can figure out an x value that will force your answer to be a whole number, positive or negative. Notice this, at least two of your choices need to be negative numbers when you're doing this activity. Two of your choices in each graph set have to be negative numbers. Checking this one out, square root. Some of y'all having trouble with the symbol. Square root is the opposite of squaring. So 7 squared is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. Okay? That's how square roots work. They're the opposites of squaring. They're asking what number times itself equals me. What you're going to try to do with this one is make the answer under here be a perfect square so that you can take a square root and have an integer value. I know that 100 is a perfect square. So if I can force the 50 minus x to equal 100, 50 minus x equals 100, then my answer will be 10, because 10 squared is 100. Uh, I'm going to need x to be negative 50. 50 minus negative 50 is 100. So when x is negative 50, the answer to the question is 10. 50 minus 50 is 100. The square root of 100, or what number times itself equals 100, is 10. Last example. This one might be a little rougher. You've got some decimal numbers in here. For this and for the other ones, if you're struggling to find numbers that will result in integer value answers, you can guess and check for a little while. If you absolutely can't find one, you're going to have to do what you got to do. If you come out with decimal answers, it is what it is. I'm not expecting you to spend forever trying to come up with a, a perfect number. But this one, so for the previous two, this guy right here, you need to force your denominator to equal something that divides equally into 60. For this one here, you need to force what's underneath of the square root to be a perfect square number. Perfectly one number times itself. I'm not going to tell you what you need to do with this one because I actually want to offer a bonus for my people that love thinking challenges. I want to see if you can figure out a rule or a law or a pattern for what numbers can be chosen for x that will force this answer to be a whole number. 
I'm going to give you one example still, but I'm not going to tell you why it works. So let's say x equals negative 17. When x is negative 17, if I run this into a calculator, I'm going to have 1.4 times negative 17 minus 8.2. So we've got 1.4 times negative 17 minus final answer you can see it on screen there negative 32 so when x is negative 17 k k of x is negative 32 and an integer value now I'm telling you there's a there's a pattern or a rule or a law for what x can be to force the final answer to be an integer. If you can figure out what that is, you can put that on slide four. Your own wording, what's the pattern, what's the rule, how did you manage to force, how did you manage to choose x's to force y to be uh, integer. Can't figure it out, all good. Like I say, if you're very much struggling, especially with this one, to pick, to choose X's, after you've tried for a while, I'm cool if you have to come up with some decimal answers. Anyway, that's the task. All my people who have neglected doing part one and part two in this series, you might want to go back and work on those before you mess with this one. They would be the very first one in the series is relation notation plus graphing. All right, this is the first one. If you haven't done this yet, you might want to do this first. Uh, the second one is the most recent one that we did. We, we, we waited a little while before we did a part two. And this one that you're looking at right now is going to be part three. If you haven't done part one and part two yet, you might want to go back and do those. If you are going to work on something former, you want to drop that in the chat, Mr. I'm working on this today, where you fill in what the this is, okay? Because if you haven't realized, I take away points, I take away classwork points when you're not on task during class in the main room. so. If I don't know what you're working on, I always assume you're working on the newest thing. If you're working on something older, that's okay, but you got to let me know that so I can open it up and take a look at it and guide you if you're moving astray. Time's running low. Ask the questions you need to ask for sure in class so that you can get assignments done.